Thank you so much, Idea Jen, for having me again uh, to share one of the conversations I've had with an exceptional person. I'd like to introduce True Jane, Senior VP at Alaska Airlines. Hi, Hi True. Hello, Sherry. It's so exciting to be here with you. Thank you. You know, we, we had a conversation a little bit ago um, about how sometimes we are limiting ourselves from the next opportunities. And you said some really, um, you said some great things that I really want to share um, with the community and give them a better perspective on, um, you know, going for that next opportunity, going for that next job when they're ready. Um, so that's where this is stemmed from, from our conversation. So to, to dig right in, um, you know, what are some of the things you consider when going for an opportunity? Yes, um, you know, Sherry, I, I think for me, it's been about um, making sure that it fits in with where I want to go next. So it's not just about the next opportunity, but how is that going to enable me uh, to take the next one after it? So I think as people are thinking about where should they go next? Keeping in mind sort of the bigger picture of what it enables them to do and what opportunities it might actually open up for them. Because uh, sometimes taking a path that's different from, you know, just what's evident will open up new opportunities for you. So looking ahead to say, if I look back, would that have been the right step for me? Um, and then one thing that's been very important for me personally is that it allows me to grow and learn. Um, so taking something that I've already done, but it doesn't give me the opportunity to grow at the same time um, is, is, uh, is not the best. And I think it ties to the conversation we had about how women um, tend to limit themselves in um, not, you know, putting up their hand for I'm ready for something or when somebody taps them on the shoulder, they're not confident that they can do it. Um, and I think it's a very well-known uh, statistic that men will apply for a job when they're 60% ready for it and women when they're 100% or even more than 100% ready. And I think the thing I would ask, um, especially women to think about is when you think you're 60% ready, you are ready. Have that confidence in yourself and uh, take, take on that opportunity and it allows you to, first of all, you already know everything you need to know, even though you yourself may not think that. And then secondly, it's, uh, it'll give you the opportunity to grow and learn, uh, which, is, um, which will set you up for the next piece. So really, again, look, looking for growth, looking for how that fits in and having that confidence in yourself is very important because others sometimes see it before we see it in ourselves. Thank you, Chiru. I think that's some really solid insight. And I remember the first time I heard that statistic of the 60%, 100%. Um, and I'm, I do that to myself too. I'm like, oh, I got to check all the boxes, you know, school stuff, um, opportunities. And uh, we were at, it was in September, 2019, when you took me to uh, the Empower Women and Girls Summit at the UN. Uh, and that was powerful because I've since been able to um, share that with so many other people as they're trying to go for their next step and to remind them, you know, 100% isn't actually always necessary. Um, and so with that being said, you know, how, how would you um, recommend and uh, what encouragement do you have for women who are seeking to make the next step uh, for themselves? So I think it starts with expressing your interest. Um, a lot of times we believe that others know what we want to do, what our career aspirations are. And my experience has been that it's not so. Um, you know, we are top of mind for ourselves and not necessarily for everybody around us. So expressing your interest, raising your hand to say, I do want to advance my career. And also are there, um, uh, there may be other opportunities that you are interested in that are outside of your organization and nobody knows about that. So taking that uh, responsibility for your own career and making sure your leaders 
your your leaders, not just your direct leaders, but leaders around the company, are uh, are aware of your interests. So it's 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 never um, the excuse. The excuse should never be I didn't know you were interested. So at least check that off the box. Make sure you express your interest. Um, I think having conversations with other leaders on what do I need to work on uh, to develop or get myself ready for a certain role. Um, and it's a great way to have a conversation when you know you have some work to, to do to develop, but it gives an opportunity to have a good discussion on these are the areas you need to develop. And having that conversation with multiple leaders will give you a holistic view of where the areas are that you need to do more work on. Um, one of the times when I was looking to um, advance in my career, I sat down with one of the leaders and I said, well, I'm interested in your role and what do I need to work on to be ready for it? And I was so surprised because his answer was, you're the only name I've given as my replacement. Now, this goes back to that first question you asked, right? He could see something in me that I didn't see in myself. So that confidence is so important. And having that discussion was so important to say, I'm interested, let me know. And that conversation could have gone differently to say, here's the things you need to work on, but at least then you're getting a good view of uh, what you need to do. Sometimes we see opportunities in the organization um, that, are uh, that are not filled. And so don't see that as your leader's job to go figure it out, right? If you see something that you believe is needed and if you're the right person for it, I look at it as doing a pitch. Like if you're doing a pitch for a product or, or your startup, you're doing a pitch for, this is a role that's missing in the organization, it's needed and I am the right person for it and here's why I am the right person for it. So don't let opportunities like that go by. Um, and then, you know, we were talking, Sherry, about, you know, a lot of times we hear that um, you are a diversity hire. And it's not said directly. I think it's it's subtle. It's indicated that, you know, we're very interested in diversity in the company. And, and you feel like you've been hired just because you're a woman or a woman of color. And I'll tell you, this has happened to me many, many times. The first time it happened, it was shocking. I think I was, uh, I got promoted and I heard that. And it, it took, it took the air out of me, right? It was like, well, how could somebody say something like that? And I think from then on, it's been, okay, I get it, bring it on, because I have to prove myself every single time, and I will prove myself, and you will see what I'm capable of. And um, I think it's, um, it's, it's, you know, we were talking about how, it, you know, once or twice, it, it may be the foot into the door, but it, when it happens multiple times, it's not luck. It's really capability and skill. So um, a, a number of you might, might get that comment or hear it. My ask or request would be don't take that as, a, um, as something that dissuades you or makes you feel that you're not capable. It's really, um, it's, really um, it, it's just a way of somebody expressing what they're feeling about it. And then obviously they'll get to see how great a job uh, you're going to do um, in, in that role. Thank you so much for sharing. And, you know, the, we had that conversation and that really resonated. Um, and I think a lot of uh, women could use hearing that and just understanding that it's, you know, when you hear something that's not necessarily favorable, it doesn't reflect anything on your capabilities or skill set as a contributor to the organization in which you're in. And, you know, the, the proof is in the hard work, the proof is in, you know, staying steady and continuing to develop yourself and push yourself and work through that. And I think that that's, um, you know, if it's part of it, then it's part of it, then, you know, check the box of saying, oh, that happened or didn't happen. And then continue to work hard and, and push through. So I really appreciate you sharing that story because um, that is, you know, it's hard to not, you know, you, you can hear it a handful of times and then you might start to believe it. Yeah. yeah. And like you said, it's, it's, sometimes it's that foot in the door that you, you know, mm -hmm. and the, the same thing is repeating itself as women are trying to get on board, right? Mm -hmm. And then a very interesting process of how you get on boards 
And there are diversity targets now to get women and women of color on boards. Well, great, that gets you in, wonderful. Now you have to prove yourself in, in every single way, which you know we all have the capability to do. Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, one last question for you is, what have you learned about job recs and key elements you wish you knew at the beginning of your career? What are some of the, the key points you've picked up along the way? Yeah, that's a, a great question, Sherry. I was reflecting back on that. Um, you know, as I've come into leadership positions and I've been more responsible for job recs, what I've realized is they're more for compliance. I think the way job requisitions are written, it's to meet, you know, what what needs to be in a job rec to meet the compliance requirements. I um, I think I encourage people to um, to go a little deeper and understand what the job is really about. Um, I think we do a pretty um, bad job at identifying the creative and the intuitive skills that are needed, especially in technology. It comes across as, you know, very um, black and white kind of a job and not where you can use all of your creative skills. So uh, when you see a job requisition, don't take that at face value. Go a little bit deeper to understand, you know, what are the skills that you may be able to bring to that role and um, how that could be different from um, an opportunity that, you know, you, you might be thinking you want to pursue, but maybe this opens up another door. Um, you know, from my personal journey, um, I started in software and technology and then went to the infrastructure side and then went to program management and then went to strategy and now have gone into a digital and more revenue driving role for the company. And it's just been when I look back, um, if I had stayed on the path that I thought I was on, I would never be here. So it was those opportunities that came along the way. Or, or opportunities that I created um, that gave me the uh, that gave me the chance to go try different pieces of the puzzle and 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 when I did that, other opportunities opened up that I had never thought of before. So I think especially early in your career, um, I wish I had known that that's the time to experiment and try different things and and really figure out what you like, what do you have a passion for. Um, and you know, as as, um, as uh, coming coming out of COVID, if if we can say we're coming out of it, I think the employee and the work environments are changing. We're going from you know working nine to five to working anytime. We're going from working in the office to working from anywhere. And I see similarly, like you know. Um, you know, following sort of a corporate ladder, I think it's the opportunity to create your own ladder. So there are so many things you can do um, in a company, in a job. You can define your own job and say, this is really what's missing that I need to bring in to the company. So don't, don't just look at the job requisition. It's just a starting point, not the end point. That's... Um... That's super fantastic. And thank you for, um, again, sharing those experience with us as well. And I like your point about building your ladder and, you know, creating those rungs and those rungs don't necessarily have to be in the same path um, in which you're going down and to dig deeper into the job wrecks. I think that's a really good um, piece of advice as well as you get into the bullet points. Well, what does the bullet point mean? And asking those appropriate questions to get you further into that, I think is really um, very valuable and I appreciate you sharing those. Any last words that you'd like to share with the, the community? Um, I think it just comes back to believing in yourself and having that confidence that you can do it and then developing your brand and networking with people around you that are gonna help you um, you know, take you even further and be that uh, community and be that support structure for you. Excellent. Drew, thank you again so much for your time today and sharing your experiences. Um, get out there, push yourself, and uh, go apply. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you. Thank you.